So you'll remember that smooth muscle is a little different than skeletal muscle in the sense that smooth muscle doesn't need like um, an action potential every time to contract, right? Instead, nerves stimulate smooth muscle or inhibit smooth muscle, okay? If we, if we use our meters and we, and we look at the electrical activity of the GI tract, what we find first is that all the time there are these slow increases and decreases of membrane potential. But they're, they're not big enough, the amplitudes are not large enough to cause significant muscle contraction, right? We're not reaching threshold, but we have these sort of ups and downs, right? So slow waves happen three to 12 times per minute. Now at the top point of these slow waves, the, um, the uh, cells often do in fact reach their threshold and then we get the spikes, right? So they have little action potentials when they hit the top of the slow waves. <clears throat> and it's those spikes, the spike potentials that actually cause the smooth muscle contraction and therefore the motility, the moving of things um, forward. So in the gut, our resting membrane potential is about minus 56, okay? So it's a little higher than nerve um, cells typically are. But of course, this membrane potential can be adjusted up or down by a variety of effects, okay? So they're moved up, in other words, closer to threshold, closer to depolarization by stretch, acetylcholine, and parasympathetics. Okay, if you remember that parasympathetic is rest and digest, not surprisingly, when it sends its signal, the gut responds with stimulation, right? So it's going to become more active in response to acetylcholine, the parasympathetic um, system hormone, or any of the other parasympathetic system. Then stretch. If we have an area of gut that's being stretched out, that area needs to move faster, right? We, we need to, to um, spread that material out over a greater distance so it's not being held in one place. So stretch all by itself also triggers um, spikes and depolarization. <laughs> Makes me wonder if she's looking for something. But I can't do anything for you at the moment. All right. Um, okay, so those are things that tend to depolarize, right? Things that tend to hyperpolarize are the opposite, your norepi and your sympathetics, right? Because we learn when the rest and digest system is active, we digest well. When our fight or flight system is active, we turn, tend to suppress the GI tract, right? Put that blood in other places so you can fight off the mountain lion. So that's what these are doing. The um, norepi and sympathetics tend to hyperpolarize the membrane. You're going to have more adventure in that sink than you think there, sweet pea. She may also be looking for a bathroom. I don't know. Oh, yeah. huh? I'm not, she's not supposed to be a distraction, so I apologize if you <laughs> are feeling distracted. I, she hasn't done this ever. But she's relaxing, right? Soon she's going to be up on your tables wanting pets. All right, so sympathetic, de hyperpolarized, um, parasympathetic, depolarized, closer to membrane. Okay, now, in terms of actual mechanism, just like all smooth muscle, it's calcium-based. Okay, so when we get our spike potential, what that's triggering is entry of calcium ions into the smooth muscle those calcium ions are gonna flow through the gap junctions and cause that functional syncytium to, to contract, to move along. 